Hey, John here. Let's talk about what it means to shift uh, binary numbers, okay? Shift them left, shift them to the right. This is a section uh, 2.4 from my RISC-V assembly language programming manual I'm working on. If you want your own copy, go to Google, search for rvalp, click on releases, I are in GitHub, open the assets, and book.pdf right there is the file that we're looking at right here. Okay, so what does it mean to shift a binary number? All right, you can shift left, you can shift it to the right. And what you're really doing is just moving the bits in one direction or the other. So we have two different kinds of shifts on top of the directions. We have logical shifting, and you'll see in a minute we have arithmetic shifting. So here it, it's best shown with a couple of diagrams, right? So let's look and see what happens. If I have a value, this is a 20-bit binary number, you know, for the sake of discussion. And I want to shift it left two bits, well, all you need to do is move each one of them to the left, too. So this one here ends up moving over two bits and ends up in there. And all these zeros get moved over as well. This one here gets moved left and ends up over there. This one here gets ended up over there. This one here ends up in position 19. These two bits right here are simply thrown away. They're shifted off the end and discarded. Bits that come in over here, since I shifted it left to, these will always end up uh, with being set to zero, all right? So there's an infinite supply of zeros that get shifted in on the least significant side of the binary number, and the most significant bits that are shifted away in a left shift are simply thrown away, all right? If we're shifting it to the right, remember this is logical shifting, you do the exact same thing. If you uh, end up bits uh, are all going to move to the right. So if I want to move it to the right one, this guy here ends up over here. The zero is simply thrown away because it gets shifted off to the end. Any new bits that needed to come in on the left are uh, simply set to zero. Okay. The one bit here, you can see shifts at the left one. This zero here shifts left one. This guy, these three bits here end up getting shifted to the right one and end up there. Okay, that's really all there is to logical shifting left and right. Obviously, if I shifted this thing to the left 20 places, it would result in the entire value turning into zero, right? Whether I shifted to the left or to the right because that's so many shifting positions that all the values that might ever be set to ones will have been discarded, and all the values that came in from the left would be zeros. So if you happen to have a 20-bit number and you shift it to the right 20 positions, that will set the value to zero, okay? Note down here, any vacated bit positions are always filled with zero, and those are the, you know, those are the ones that come in. You know, if you're shifting to the right, that's the, I'm talking about these guys here. Now, there's the other kind of shifting. It's called arithmetic. Now, if you're shifting a two's complement number, what happens is the vacated bit positions are filled by replicating the sign bit. Now, this is only if you're shifting to the right. Arithmet arithmetic shifting to the right is what I'm talking about here, okay? Uh, if you arithmetically shift to the left, it's kind of a strange thing. Some CPUs do it one way, other CPUs do it another way. We're only going to consider arithmetic shifting when we're shifting in the right direction, okay? If you're shifting left, we will always consider logical shifting, all right? In other words, there is no arithmetic left shift, at least for the sake of this tutorial. All right, so when you're doing it to the right arithmetically, look what happens. You don't just uh, bring in zeros to fill in the vacated positions. You fill it in with one. Well, you don't fill it in with ones. You fill it in by replicating the sign bit over here. All right, so let's see what's going on here. If we shift this thing, what? Four bit positions to the right. Well, these four bits will then get thrown away. They disappear over here on the right side. These three ones here shifted to the right four positions. One, two, three, four. End up right here. Okay? Then this zero goes to the right four positions, ends up right here. This one here ends up right here. Now, these four bits here are all set to one because... 
we've filled it with a copy of the sign bit. All right, I should have another diagram in here. Wow, I don't. I should put another note to myself. If you shift, and the reason for that is, what happens if I shift arithmetically to the right and there's a zero up here? Okay, in that case, these bits here will all be set to zero because the rule is you take the bit that's right here and you replicate that value and you use that to fill in uh, these bits. Okay. So this bit here is replicated and used to fill in the vacated positions over here, all right, in an arithmetic shift. In a logical shift, when you're shifting to the right, all the vacated bits get filled with zeros, no matter what was over here, okay? So logical shifting, in my opinion, is easier to understand. It's literally what you mean, okay? Arithmetic shifting means replicate this sign bit, all right? Now, if you think about this, why do you do this? Well. The reason that we have both shifts is because you can use the arithmetic right shift to divide a value in half. All right? So let's look up here. What do we got here? Uh, when we shifted it to the left, this bit here, this is something, something, something with a, a two. This is the twos column, right? and I shifted it left to positions. Well, this value here that contributes two to the value, to the magnitude of, the, of this whole number, gets shifted left twice, one, two. Well, that's gonna multiply the two by two, and then by two again, all right? So if I double it twice, I've multiplied this number by four, okay? And that's the same for all these other bits. All of these things will contribute a, a larger magnitude than they did up here. Now, you got to be careful because obviously we threw a bit away over there. If you're throwing bits away on the left, then you're really not going to end up with it doubling the value. But if all these bits over here were all set to zero, and I shifted this value left twice, it would have multiplied a number that's at least composed of these bits over here by four. This one, shifting it right one position, divides the value of this thing in half. All right? Now, it turns out this one would have to be a, an unsigned number for this to be true, right? And that's why we have arithmetic shifting. Think about it. The twos become the ones, right? What's going on over here? I don't know. When the 20-bit number, the magnitude of this is a half a million, okay? When you shift it to the right once, the contribution is a quarter of a million, and so on, all right? So when you shift it right, one position, you're dividing this value by two. When you're shifting left, if you shift left one position, you're multiplying it by two. You shift it left twice, you're multiplying it by four. And you have to worry about truncation, okay? If you're shifting it too much and you're throwing bits away, it'll screw it up. Now, if we look at arithmetic shifting, okay, this would work if this is a two's complement number. And it will work. The, uh, the shifting of this thing right, if you shifted it right one single bit and you kept the sign bit the same, you would have divided the value of this by two. That's true if there's a zero up here or a one up here. In this case, we shifted it right by four which means we ended up throwing this bit away. And we're shifting too many of them away. We truncated it. It was like the one above, right? It's still roughly dividing it, in this case, by 16, right? Shifting it left once divides it by 2. Twice divides it by 4. Uh, three times divides it by 8. Four times would have divided this number by 16. Again, those powers of 2 keep showing up, all right? Whenever you're working in binary, that's what's going to happen. And we know this is intuitive. It's certainly the logical version of this is intuitive because we've been doing this in decimal forever. When you multiply a number by 10, what do you do? You move the decimal place over 1. You've just done a left shift in decimal. How do you divide a number by 10? Well, you move the decimal place the other direction, right? This is intuitive. If you're doing it in binary... 
you're multiplying and dividing by the base. It still works, but the base in this case is 2, which is why you got the 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now, in 2's complement, you do have some games you're playing with the sign bit over here, but it still works, and it works fine, provided that you replicate this sign bit when you're shifting to the right. Okay? If you don't replicate the sign bit, then the negative number would obviously turn into a positive number because that one would turn into a zero, and you wouldn't really be dividing by two anymore. So this is a handy uh, uh, feature that almost every CPU implements. All right? Now, uh, I'm on a roll, so why don't we throw in another side note. Sometimes some CPUs do have a arithmetic left shift. All right, and the way those work when that is available is it will take this value here and do the left shift, but it will not shift the sign bit away. Okay, and if you look at it, it sort of does double it. It's kind of weird. Uh, it, it it it's useful in some cases, but not all cases. Uh, the the the, uh, the CPU that I'm talking about in this manuscript doesn't even have a left shift uh, operator. Okay, it, it it doesn't have an instruction for it. You'd have to write your own code and do it explicitly in machine language if you wanted to do that. Okay, uh, another thing that you see some CPUs doing is they have a, a, something called a rotate instruction. And in a rotate instruction, instead of throwing, uh, if, I, if I said rotate left in that case, right, instead of throwing the bits away, right, this thing shifts left, uh, rotates left too. These two bits are thrown away, and I said the zeros come in over here. In a rotate, these two bits would wrap around and come back in over here, Okay. So just so you realize, you know, some CPUs have other operations as well as just shifting, okay? And they have rotate through carry. There's a lot of variations of this that some systems have and other ones don't. But uh, not, uh, bottom line is, if you're going to use uh, a language like C, you don't have access to all those instructions. You have shift operators. In the uh, If you're going to write a program in C, you're going to have logical shifting, and you're going to have arithmetic shifting, okay? So that's really all I cover right here. Arithmetic shifting and a lot of systems is not supported when shifting uh, to the left, all right? So that's how shifting works. Thanks for watching. Bye.